Hello and welcome to the Young Orthopod and today we'll learn about the blood supply of a long bone. Before going into the blood supply, let's quickly review the anatomy of a long bone. A long bone is divided into three parts. The elongated tubular central part of the long bone is called the diaphysis. The enlarged area of the bone at the ends is called the epiphysis. The intermediate segment of the bone connecting the diaphysis and the epiphysis is called the metaphysis. The articular ends of the epiphysis or the joint surface are covered with articular cartilage. The rest of the external surface of the long bone is covered with a tough connective tissue sleeve called the periosteum. Nutrient foramen is an oblique canal usually situated in the middle third of the diaphysis of the long bones. Blood supply of the long bone accounts for 5-10% to of the cardiac output. A typical long bone receives blood supply from various sources. These include nutrient arteries, epiphyseal arteries, metaphyseal arteries, and periosteal arteries. Let's look at them one by one. The nutrient arteries form a high-pressure system derived from major systemic arteries. It enters the long bone shaft or the diaphysis through the nutrient foramen. In the medullary cavity, it divides into ascending and descending branches which extend longitudinally along the axis of the long bone. These branches gives off number of smaller lateral oriented parallel vessels called the radial branches. These branches supplies the bone marrow and the inner third of the compact bone of the diaphysis. At the metaphysis, the ascending and descending vessels divide repeatedly into smaller spiral vessels which are joined by metaphyseal and epiphyseal arteries. Metaphyseal arteries arising from the anastomosis around the joint enters the metaphysis at the margin of the joint capsule attachment. These metaphyseal arteries anastomose freely with the spiral branches of the nutrient arteries making the metaphysis most vascular area of the long bone. Epiphyseal arteries are derived from periarticular vascular arcades. The epiphysis has openings that permit passage of large number of vessels in and out. In children, the epiphyseal vessels are separated from the metaphyseal vessels due to presence of the epiphyseal plate. In adults, the metaphysis and the epiphysis are fused together following the arrest of the growth cartilage. Here, the epiphyseal arteries freely anastomose with metaphyseal and the nutrient arteries. When articular cartilage and the epiphyseal cartilage are continuous, the epiphyseal arteries pierce the epiphyseal cartilage and supplies the epiphysis. If these arteries are damaged in epiphyseal separation, a vascular necrosis of the epiphysis may occur. In other bones where the articular cartilage is not continuous with the epiphyseal cartilage, the epiphyseal arteries enters the epiphysis without piercing the growth plate. In these cases, epiphyseal separation will not cause a vascular necrosis. The periosteum has a rich blood supply from the blood vessels which anastomose beneath the periosteum. Periosteal arteries act as a low pressure system and penetrate bone at the sites of attachment of the facial sheath or aponeurosis. They enter the Volkmann's canal and supply roughly the outer one-third of the compact bone of the diaphysis. Long bones drain into central venous sinus. From central venous sinus through nutrient vein, periosteal veins and emissary veins, it drains out. So this was all about the blood supply of the long bone. If you like this video, please let us know in the comments below. For more interesting content in orthopedics, subscribe to the Young Orthopod. We'll be back with another video. See you soon.